at the warehouse. We were at the warehouse. We got, we got, we got, we got information on Wanda Peck, if you remember. And you can hear the car right now. You can hear the, you can hear the sound of the car. We got information on Wanda Peck. Um, and we probably need to visit Wanda and get, uh, and get a good, and get an idea of what the heck is going on. We still don't know anything about J. St. Gideon. Who I think we need to talk to as well, um, but we don't know where J. St. Gideon is. We've heard his name multiple times, and uh, I don't know anything about him. All right, so let's start that timer up. Do you have any suggestions? And let's go. We kill them, bury their bodies, or we could do that. And go about our lives as if nothing happened. All right, here we go. Um, uh, in four, six, two, one. All right. Oh, where are we? Inside the San Francisco Chronicle building, I look for Wanda Peck. I've always thought Wanda was good looking in a way, far away, but I like Wanda. She's a good source of information. And she knows how this city is run. Okay, what, whatever text. I, I, I don't know why you're judging people on their looks. I really don't. It's 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 kind of disturbing, honestly. But whatever. Carl Linsky. He was a professor at San Francisco University. He killed himself last last week. Question. Suicide. Uh, Sylvia. Linsky. Sorry, I can't help you there. Okay, Dolores. Light body. Can't help you there. Um, Bash. Dagot. Can't help you there. Peter Dahl. Can't help you there. Insurance. Can't help you there. All right, MTC. MTC really stands for Management Through Control. The Management Training Center is just a front for a project called Overlord. Okay, Overlord. Overlord? Yeah, Larry Hammond wanted me to do some research on that. The Overlord project was developed 50 years ago in England. Scientists began working on a me on mental ability booster. Alright, I, I got a new name. I got a new name. What was it? What's the new name? Oh no, I I missed it. I I I I didn't write it down. The experiment involved increasing a person's mental capacity by connecting his brain directly to a computer. Several scientists tried the experiment on themselves, and at first it worked. By simulating stimulating untapped areas of the mind, they increased their IQs by fifteen to twenty five percent. But they also found that they were extremely susceptible to suggestion. Commands given through the computer would be followed without question. The experimentation began more, became more and more radical. Many of the scientists developed severe cases of psychosis. Some committed suicide, and others died under mysterious circumstances. Okay. I'm going to ask him. Larry Hammond. Okay. Larry Hammond. Okay, we got a new name. Larry Hammond. Okay, I want to ask about Larry. See if that gives us any. Larry Hammond. He's a brilliant computer scientist who has done some work for MTC Corp. He was concerned about some MTC project. Asked a guy named Ron Meat. <laughs> Ron Meat. What the heck kind of name is that? Ron Meat. Ron Meat, where to find him? Is he is he related to Bra Blaze Wiener? Are we gonna are we gonna is one of the people gonna be named Larry Hamburger? Frank Sausage? Well, I wrote down Ron Meat. That's a guy named Ron Meat. Okay, let's ask about Ron Meat. 
The guy's real paranoid. He never stays in one place for very long. You'll have to check through with your sources to find him. Okay. All right. Good to know. All right, what else should we ask? Uh, Doomsday. Let's see if she knows anything about Doomsday. Um, pass. pass. Nexus. Nexus. Uh, pass card. Well, she won't know anything about these either then. But we're going to ask anyway. Password. Um, should we ask about the various people, I guess? Sunny Flet. Flet. Sonny, he, he was here a while ago asking me to check out a number of things. Then he disappeared. Okay. Uh, Blaze? Blaze was a red herring. But we're going to ask about him anyway. Or they claimed he was. John Claus? Maurice? Ribble, David Pope, not David Pop, David Pope, David Pope, Cal Davis, J. Saint, Gideon, he lost the presidency of the company, Gideon Enterprises, to Frank. Here, here we go. We got another name. Frank. Uh, S-C-H-I-M-M-I-N-G. He's an old geezer about 80. You'll find him in Beverly Hills. Oh, we got, we got, we got a, we got a new address. Three, eight, nine, one. All right. Nice. All right. Let's ask about... I think we already asked about Larry Hammond, haven't we? Hammond. Yeah. So we need to, t we need to ask about Ron Meat. Ron Meat. Ron Meat. All right. We're done here. I think we're done here. Yeah, we're done here. Oh, we just have to say, ah, we just have to say exit. Hopefully you already know this, but don't take deworming medicine unless you actually have worms. It does not treat or prevent COVID. Oh, really? Good advice. Also, don't lick glass that has cyanide in it. Don't do that either. All right, let's look at, um, let's call our, one of our sources and ask about Ron Meat. What's up, Pix? Ron Meat. There's nothing in our files. Of course there's not. Our files suck. We need better files. We need better files. What do you need, Murphy? Make me an offer. Five hundred dollars. That seems to be your going rate. You're as cheap as your suit. Okay, I, you need more money for that, apparently. You're as cheap as your suit. Thousand? Look for my facts. Okay. Estimate, estimated arrival 254. Okay. We got information on Ron Meat for a thousand dollars. All right, let's go back to um, Carl's house and steal that fruitcake. 
Because we have the screwdriver now. So we can steal that fruitcake, right? I think we need to steal. I, th I think we want to go steal that fruitcake. That $4,000 fruitcake. Let's see what this fact says. Okay, Ron Mead hangs out near Quaite Tower. He's a little unpredictable, so watch yourself. NC4525. Like jelly and jam and preserves and all that stuff and beef jerky. Display case. Open. Use the slot screwdriver to shut down the magnetic field and open the case. Look. I have I have five minutes to switch off the alarm before the police arrive. I was not expecting that. I was not actually expecting that. Okay, so if you if this is like this is almost like a thief thing. You know? Any idea how to do this? In order to steal the fruitcake, we need to disarm the alarm. The bishop is missing. All right. Well, maybe we don't need this fruitcake after all. Although the plant seems weird. You know, have we tried moving the plant? I don't know why the plant's even there if we can't do anything with it. He's a he's a private investigator. I haven't found any way to to um We can do that. I feel like if you were going to put a thing to uh, disarm a security system, you put it behind the bar. That's just my opinion. You put it over here. You know? But that doesn't seem to be the case.
Ah, there it is. There's a switch that was behind the shoe box. Alright. Aha! We did it. We 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 made off with the fruitcake. I didn't I didn't plan for that to be a puzzle, but I, it, it was. And I noticed it's actually gone. It looks like I think we actually took it. Like it's not on the. Well, I guess I don't know. There we go. We got we got the fruit cake. You put it inside a tarantula terrarium. That's not a bad idea. All right, let's go to. Let's go to J. St. John first. Well, no, maybe Ron Me. Let's check out where Ron Me is. At the base of the Koi Tower, I wait for Ron Meat. I finally see him. He has radiation burns over most of his face, but he has a nice eye. Too bad he doesn't have another one to match. I call him over to the side of my speeder. Whoa! Dude. Um. Wait, what am I asking him about? Larry? I forget what I'm asking him about. Let's threaten him. Okay, that's enough. I'll talk. You'll find him in Freaktown. In Freaktown? Freaktown? What the kind of place is Freaktown? What the kind of place is Freaktown? Is that it? Is that all he can tell me? You can't really help me about anything. You can't really help me with anything. So, I guess we're done with him. All we had to do was punch him once and he told us where Larry Hammond was. All right. All right, we've gone to Ron Me. All right, next we're going to go to, I guess, Larry Hammond, since he's close again. So, four, nine, three, five. It's the same view we had before. The address I have for the mutant computer specialist, Larry Hammond, is a decaying old warehouse building in the heart of Freaktown. This is where most of the unfortunate individuals live who suffered severe damage from nuclear radiation. Many of their offspring suffered genetic damage resulting in similar grotesque mutations. Most were treated as outcasts and were forced into this community away from those not affected. I step through a partially open doorway into a large room. I see several large mutants and none of them look too happy to see me. I'm looking for Larry Hammond, I say, quickly. A fellow steps forward. He's about 30, and looks like he's got a serious grudge against the world. Some people are so ungrateful for extra blessings. At least he was born with all his vital organs inside his body. My name is Larry, and this is my brother Daryl. Feel free to speak in front of him. What can I do for you? <laughs> he's got two heads. <laughs> I mean, at least he's nice, right? Um, I guess we'll ask about Carl Linsky. Sorry, I can't help you there. Okay, Nexus. 
I designed the Nexus system. There is a main computer and eight access terminals, but I also built a failsafe into the system. To stop the Overlord project, you will need all eight pass cards and passwords. You must then find the location of the main Nexus computer, insert the pass cards into the main computer, and you can initiate the self-destruct sequence. This will destroy all data and the relay satellite as well. Okay, that's a very good clue on what we need to do. I think I think I know what uh, what we need to do, or part of what we need to do. Well, maybe that maybe we'll not. Okay, let's look Overlord. Overlord is the continuation of a project that was attempted in England 50 years ago and failed. Now with a new technology, they are attempting to control the actions of an individual through microchips and satellite transmissions. That sounds bad. About a year ago, Tom Griffith, the vice president of MC Corporation, there's another name. Tom Griffith. Let me make sure I got it spelled right. Griffith, yeah. The vice president of MTC Corporation hired me to design a computer for the Overlord project. They also wanted eight access terminals. A colleague of mine, Cal Davis, told me that he had been hired by the MTC Corporation to do research in controlling human behavior through direct brain stimulation. When I started asking questions, they told me it was none of my business. Then I read that Davis had been killed. I decided to go into hiding. If you're looking for a way to stop Project Overlord, you'll have to get to the main computer and destroy the satellite. To gain access to the destruct sequence, you'll need all eight... I know you've already told me this. The gray pass card was stolen by members of the Law and Order Party. But my password is King. Oh, we got another one. King Gray. And uh, Pawn was, what color was his card? I don't remember. We have it, but I don't remember what color it is. Green, it was green. Okay. And Law and Order Party has his card, and he is friends with Cal. He was friends with Cal. with Cal. Okay. To get the rest of the passwords and cards, you'll need to find each of the scientists working on the project. Once you gather all the cards, you'll need to find the main computer to use them. I uh, don't know where the main computer is, and other than Cal Davis, I don't know any of the names of the remaining six scientists who worked on the project. If I were you, I'd start with the accounting people at Gideon. Jerome Milborn. Oh, jeez. My gosh, look at all these names. Jerome Milborn, uh, Ed Bradley, L E Y, and Arnold Dweeb. Dweeb, such a dweeb. All right, we got more names. They might have names of the people who have received checks from MTC. Okay. Um, I guess we'll ask about um, Frank uh, Shimming. I met him once before he was president, and he seemed like the type of person who would enjoy pulling the wings off flies. Okay. Tom Griffith. He's vice president of MTC. I think he's more responsible for what's going on than Frank. Okay. Um, Jerome. Uh, Milborn. He may have names of people associated with MTC. Okay, what about Ed Bradley? Oh, here we go. We got an, an address. NC. Seven three one two. I can't believe that piece of paper they gave us like was supposed to be enough. Um, Arnold <clears throat> Dweeb. 
Uh, he knows Gideon, MTC Corporation, pretty well. But watch him. He's slippery. If he pats you on the back, he's trying to get you to cough up something. Okay, so he's probably... We're gonna probably going to have to bribe him. Okay. Um, what else could we ask him about? MTC? Have we asked him about MTC? Oh, no. That's how we got... That's how we got, uh, that's how we got that info. Okay, what about Gideon Corporation? We already got that info. Gideon Enterprises. Things went bad to worse when Frank took over the presidency of Gideon Enterprises. Password. My password is King. Okay, pass, pass, card. My gray pass card was stolen by the members of the Law and Order Party. You'll have to get it from them. And that's not going to be easy. I have no idea where their main headquarters are. But if you find that location, chances are my gray pass card will be there. Okay, Law and Order. Those goose-stepping thugs are preparing to move against us, but they will be, will, but, but will be ready for them. If they try to run us out, we'll take the whole city with us. Not just Freak Town. Okay, so they're like anti mutants. They're like the anti mutant party as well. Yeah, Arnold Dweeb. All right, anything else? I guess we can ask about Ron Meat, too. I've known Ron for a long time. He's a paranoid schizophrenic because of his brain damage, but we get along okay. Um, L. St. Gideon. I did some computer work for him at MTC. He seemed nice enough. To mo he seemed nice enough to most people, but he didn't tell me he could. I could tell he didn't like freaks. <coughs> okay, so he did work for him. Interesting. <coughs> All right, what about um, Wanda? She's been a friend of our cause for a long time. Okay. I'm guessing he doesn't know any of these people. Yeah, okay, he doesn't. What about Sonny? Nope, okay, okay. All right, I think we're done here. I think we're done here. Next, we're going to go see, uh, I guess, J. St. Gideon. J. St. Gideon. So, here we go. And this is going to be a long one. So, this is going to be a... I think this might be a long trip. Yeah, it's a long one. It's the Druid House. It's the Druid House. The mystery of the Druids. It does actually look like that house. Gideon's home is a 30-room mansion in Beverly Hills. The place is lavishly furnished uh, with a living room big enough for a swimming pool. I'm ushered into the den. Mr. Gideon is intently studying his chessboard. He seems oblivious to me. Either that or he's asleep. The guy is old. I mean, ancient. But he might be a big wheel. But he must be a big wheel, because there's a picture on the wall of him receiving an award from President Michael J. Fox. Okay. Um, I give him some background information on the Linsky case, and it seems to pique his curiosity. Nexus. So sorry, Sonny. I, I can't help you there. I don't even, I don't remember why I'm talking to him. Um, oh, Overlord. Overlord? I'm sure I've never heard that name before. Do we want to threaten him? Punch him in the face? Let's punch him in the face. Ah, <laughs> uh, that didn't work. 
I, I didn't think it would work, but, you know, it was worth a try anyway. It was funny. Alright, um, let's ask about, what do we want to ask about? I don't even know. Let's ask about MTC. I set up the MTC to help improve the management skills of my executives. Uh, Shimming never liked the idea, which is why I'm surprised it still exists. I, I've heard there is something unusual going on at MTC. If there is, I'm sure Shimming is behind it. That man is dangerous. Okay, let's ask about um, Tom Griffith. Uh, Tom heads MTC. I gave him the job when I was president. He always had a great deal of respect for each other's abilities and an understanding on how to control a company. If I had my way, he would have become president of Gideon when I retired. All right, let's ask about Frank. Oh, wait, Frank. Oh, did I ask about him? Shimming forced me out of my own company. He's ruthless and totally unethical. He'll pay for that someday. Damn straight he will. Um, let's just ask about the other people. Jerome, um, Milborn, Ed Bradley, Arnold Dweeb. Um, Man, password, a uh, nexus. What is he? What? What? What's the point of visiting this guy? Like, what is he gonna? What? What? What can he tell me? He doesn't give me any useful information yet. Uh, Doomsday? Um, let's ask about Carl. Carl Linsky, just to see. I don't recall the name, but if he wanted to talk with me, that would have been impossible. I've been away the past few weeks. Okay, um... Is he gonna say that about all the names? Oh no. Interesting that he responded that way to Carl Linsky. This is kind of like we're in the. It's a little bit like it, I guess. Just a little bit. Uh. Sunny. Let's ask about Sunny Fletcher. No. Oh. Nothing. Cal Davis? Cal Davis? Nope. John Claus? Nope. Alright, I don't see how he's going to be helpful to me. Let's ask about chess. Bishop? Okay, exit. Alright, I don't see how he's going to be helpful, but, you know, maybe we'll need to go back to him at some point. He's an old guy. He gave me a little bit of background info, but not much. Let's go talk to, um, Ed Bradley, I guess. It's our next destination. 7312. Back in San Francisco. Ed Bradley. I found Ed Bradley's home and knocked on the door. I wondered to myself if this could be the same Ed Bradley who used to be on TV when I was little, but then realized he'd be dead by now. Bradley is a meek little bespeckled man, about 45. I asked him about Gideon and MTC Corporation, who replies that he has nothing to do with the accounting between the two companies, but I wanted information on that. I must talk to Arnold Dweeb. I thank him for the tip and leave. Wow, that was not very good info. Alright, 
let's let's call up Veronica or Vanessa or whatever her name is. What's up, Tex? What's up, Tex? Let's ask, let's ask about all the people we don't know about. Look for my facts. Okay, she can give me something on Frank. Can't help you there. Jerome. Milborn. Look for my facts. Okay, she can give me some on Melbourne too. Alright, that's good. Arnold Dweeb. Can't help you there. Damn it. Damn it. Okay. Well, she's gonna fax us some info. So that's good enough. Frank is the president. His office is in San Francisco at four four six. Five zero. You think he's actually going to talk to us? I don't know. I'm, I'm I'm not convinced he'll talk to us. Okay, we got uh, Jerome Milborn is at four six two three. I think we want to talk to him first. Four six two three. Okay, and that's it. Okay, so we're gonna go to four six two three in four six two three. Jerome Milborn, I stand in the sidewalk in front of the terrace condominium complex and look up at the forty story structure. Jerome Milborn's condo is on the twenty seventh floor. Uh, after a quick ride up the elevator, I find myself knocking on his door. I try for a few minutes, but no one answers. Finally, a neighbor next door walks out into the hallway and tells me that Melbourne left several days ago on vacation and won't be back for several weeks. I thank the guy and return to my speeder. So he's gone. Alright. Okay. Well, I guess we'll visit Frank. You know, I don't see this as, as being as... That's just as getting anything, but we might as well do it. Nothing. I tell the security guard, Gideon Enterprises, that I'm working on a murder case and that I'm here to talk to Frank a shimmy. He leads me to the elevators and tells me to go to the 67th floor. The receptionist ushers me into a huge suite to talk to Mr. Shimming, the president of Gideon Enterprises. He is a slick-looking man about 50 with gray hair and thick eyebrows. He doesn't look the least bit happy to see me, but he's talking to us, which I wasn't expecting. He, 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 he's also winking at me, it looks like. All right, let's ask about Carl. Carl Linsky. Linsky, oh, that, that old scientist who committed suicide. I understand he had some some had done some work for MTC Corporation, which is our management training center. The personnel department could have told you that. Okay, question. Still, we're just gonna we're just gonna throw the book at him as far as questions. I uh, can't help you there. All right, we'll ask about um, Dolores Lightbody. Lightboast? Lightbody. Nope. Um, Bash. Bash. Daggett. Nope. Um, Bunny. Maurice Gribble. Sunny Fletcher. Nope. Cal Davis. I couldn't possibly know every employee who works at the companies I manage. Surely you have something better to do with your time than bother me. 
with trivial questions. Uh, David Pope. Yep, that was Ghost Flower. Eating some Cinnamon Toast Crunch. And the name is not familiar. I, I really don't have time to get to know everyone who works for me. I replaced Mr. Gideon as president a year ago. He was a senile old man in his 80s, filled with insane ideas. He had a lot of drive to run the company in a profitable manner and had to go. Alright. Ron Meat. Wait, that's you. I'm going to ask about you anyway. As the president of Gideon, I know how to get ahead in business, and I'm not afraid to take chances. If you're finished asking me questions, I can get back to work. Griffith is in charge of our management training center. I'm sure he would, he would like to be president of Gideon, but I'm not about to turn control of this company over to him or anyone else. Well... You know, it's not necessarily your decision to make, so Jerome uh, Milborn, Ed Bradley, Arnold Dweeb. Okay. Uh, Overlord. That name means nothing to me. MTC, not MTV, MTC. MTC is our management training center. New employees that show potential are sent there to acquire corporate decision-making abilities. I personally think it's a waste of time. A manager either has the skills or he doesn't. All right, let's talk about Gideon, Gideon Enterprises. Our company is involved in the development of electronic surveillance equipment. Obviously, a man in your line of work doesn't have any formal engineering education, so talking to you in specifics would be a complete waste of time. You're an ass. Um, Nexus. Sorry, I can't help you there. Uh, I feel like there was one more thing we needed to ask about. But I can't think of it. Blaze Wiener, we need to ask about Blaze Wiener, Mike Wallace, Andy Rooney, <laughs> Andy Rooney, no, he doesn't know anything about Andy Rooney, he can't help me there, uh, password, oh, password, password, oh, Law and Order, Law and Order, everybody's heard of them, I'm no expert, but if you're if you're through with your stupid questions, get out of here. Um, I think that's about it. Oh, I still have my thing up here. Password, Overlord, Nexus. Yeah, okay. All right. I think we got all that. Look at him. He's he's kind of pissed off now. He's going like that or something. I don't know. Incoming fax. Get off this case or you'll be sorry. <laughs> okay, it's amazing. I just visited Frank and suddenly I get a fax threatening me. Wow. Alright, so Frank just threatened us. Not good to know. Thanks, Frank. You're, you're a real, you're a real stand-up, you're, you're a real stand-up person. Being hiding behind your anonymity. All right, let's talk to our contact, I guess, and see if we can get Arnold Dweeb's uh, info. Dweeb. 
What can I help you with today? Look, I remembered. We're going to ask about Arnold Dweeb. Arnold Dweeb is probably the dweebiest character. Make me an offer. 500. That seems fair. Okay. 500 seemed fair for that info. Nah, I don't want to ask about Tom Griffith. I'm pretty sure Tom Griffith would be pretty easy to track down, right? Da, 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 da. Let's wait. Let's wait for this fax. We're just going to wait for the fax. Here's the fax. We finally got it. I hope it tells me... Oh, yeah, there we go. He's agreed to meet you. He's agreed to meet me. Okay, apparently he's, uh, he's like, um, I didn't realize we were setting up a meeting. At the Oakland Coliseum, near the 50-yard line. Okay. Anybody can just go into the Oakland Coliseum. Are we getting shot? Are we gonna get shot? Are we gonna get murdered? I feel, I feel like we're gonna get murdered. Does anybody else feel like we're about to get murdered here? Oops, I put wrote it into the wrong thing. Well, there is the 50 yard line. I'm near the 50 yard line at the Oakland Coliseum. I was supposed to meet Arnold Dweeb, the accountant for MTC Corp. A strong cold wind rips off the bay. I find my trench coat, I find my trench coat clumsy, flapping around my legs. I wouldn't even wear the damn thing if it weren't to avoid the effects of the latent radiation. Arnold Dweeb suddenly appears as if from nowhere. He looks like a, a number one weenie. An A number one weenie. He's the type of accountant my parents warned me about. Look at that thing on his glasses. He's such a nerd. He had a really bad flight simulator game on the Amiga. I I I played like I don't know Microsoft Flight Simulator or something. I don't know why I even played it. Like I. I don't. It was just something to do, I guess. Like, it was just flying a freaking plane. Tell me about... Uh... Tom Griffith. Make it worth my time. I haven't got all day. I'll bet you we could threaten him. Let's try that. He pulls out a 20, 38 automatic and pumps three bullets into my body. Wow. Wow. Well, that was unexpected. That was a, that was a little bit unexpected. You know? I mean, yeah, I guess we did expect to get murdered, but I wasn't expecting to get murdered at close range by him. Tom Griffith. Let's see how much money he wants. Okay, $200. Uh, $300. $400. Five hundred dollars. He wants five hundred dollars. Thanks, buddy. I'll tell you what I know. Griffith is vice president. He acts like he owns the place. That's it. That's all you're gonna freaking give me. Oh my god.
what what can this guy give me? This guy's not giving me any information. Oh, he wants a lot of money for this one. People who know him say he's the ruthless egomaniac. maniac. He tossed the former president out on his ear through some vicious internal politics. I knew that. I knew I knew all of this stuff. He's not giving me anything. Yeah, you start with ten thousand dollars and yeah, in order to get money you can you can pawn stuff. And you can also do bounty hunting missions. That's another way to do it. He's not giving me any info. Like, nothing. Okay. This might be the... This might be him giving me something. He wants a lot. Whoa, he wants more than a thousand? Whoa! Whoa! He wants a lot of money for this one. What the heck? He 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 wants he wants a butt ton of money. All right. He wants three grand. Oh my god. All right. Let's load the game and we'll have three grand, and then we'll do it. We'll see what info he's got. It must, it's better be good info, or I will shoot him myself. You know. Here is a list of people who have received checks from MTC. I also included some of the navigational codes to help you find them. Don't tell anyone where you got this list. Carl Linsky, Ron Morgan. Whoa, this is a good... Okay, this was worth my three grand. This is what I needed to know. Do I have Ron Morgan already written down? I don't think so. I gotta, I gotta spell it correctly. Um, Jorge Valdez. Who's at NC4931? Oh, I'm gonna tell them where I got this list. Brenda Perry. In C four five seven seven Greg Call Cal Davis. Does that match what we've got for him? Three seven two. Oh, yes, it does. Big Jim Slade. Um, Tom Griffith, who we actually now have a uh, an, an address for, four five nine zero. John Claus, who we already know about, Bosworth Clark, Bosworth Clark. I'm running out of paper. Sandra Larson. Oh my gosh. There's tons of info. Wait, Sandra Larson. Sandra Larson. We know Sandra Larson. She works. Sandra Larson was somebody that dated Carl. Ooh. We might have a connection here. Sandra Larson. We already had that name. And we know where she is.
Um, Del Della Lang. Two one one one. Sam Jones. And Larry Hammond, who we already have, we already have his information. Okay. We do know where to find her. She's at seven five four five nine nine. So we've got we have uh we've been there to Ed Bradley. So we got one, two we got four new destinations and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight new leads. I mean, three grand. That was that was pretty good. I I think that was worth the three grand. All right. Can we, how do we pawn stuff? I'm low on cash. Drop this case or you're dead, Murphy. Okay. See, I need see. After I visited Frank, I, I, I kept getting faxes. Faxes came right after I visited Frank. Like, obviously not a coincidence. Okay, we're gonna visit... I wanna visit Sandra before we visit anybody else. We already had her on our radar, so um, I think she's the most interesting of all of the of all of the people that we got on that list. Okay, we're in like it looks like we're in the red light district. Okay, this was unexpected. You find Sandra Larson at a local pub. She's an extremely attractive woman in her late twenties. You can see why Linsky started to date her. Carl Lin Linsky. Carl and I started dating about two months ago. I was heartbroken when I heard about his death. Let's ask about Sylvia. Sylvia Linsky. How about Dolores? Dolores. Lightbody. But Dolores was Carl Linsky's girlfriend, but he had grown tired of her. Carl start, started dating me and said he was going to call her engagement off. Carl was worried about telling her because she had quite the temper. I just misspelled Sylvia's name. Oops. S-Y-L-V-I-A Linsky. Okay. She, and I did spell it wrong. I like Sylvia. She's a nice kid. She can be a little wild, though. Can she? Can she? Okay. I don't know where we are, but I see big guys, nude freaks, uh, totally awesome, sex. I mean, we seem to be in the red light district. I mean, I don't know. All right, what else do we have to ask her? MTC. Uh, it's supposed to be a management training corporation for employees of Gideon, but I suspect there's more to it than that. They've hired a number of top scientists. I don't know what they've been doing, but I'm sure they're not management consultants. Oh, yeah, it could be. Although we're in San Francisco, so... Um, alright, let's ask about Cal... I'm going to ask about Cal Davis. Sorry, I can't help you there. Okay, Sonny Fletcher. Sonny Fletcher. Can't help you there. Okay, Nexus. Can't help you there. Overlord. I'm afraid I've never heard that term before. Really? Hey, man, lighten up here. I'll tell you what you want to know. Okay. So I can't bribe. She's not lying to me, I guess. John Clause. Give me some information that I need. 
Give me something that helps me. David. Hope. Um. Frank. Shimmy. He's the head of Gideon Enterprises. He's an arrogant SOB. I heard he once stuck a live bunny in the paper shredder. That sounds like a lie. I mean, a good lie, but a lie. Tom Griffith. He's the guy I really dislike. He's mean, selfish, and loud mouth. Those are his good qualities. Okay. Um, hey, Charlie, what's up? Like, who are you? Like, why were you hired by them? What do you mean? He, I must have spelled it wrong. Gideon Enterprises. Why can't you tell me about Gideon? Why can't you tell me about Gideon Enterprises? Gideon Enterprises. All right, whatever. Law and order. I've seen some of their these arrogant thugs around the office. They're involved with the project at MTC. That's for sure. Really? Okay. Greg Call. Um, Arnold Dweeb. He's the accountant who works at Gideon. He's always gives me leering looks. Why, how come you can't tell me about Gideon? What? Makes no sense. Oh, well. Uh... Okay, um... I don't know. I don't feel like I can get any information out of her that I don't already have. She doesn't like Tom. She doesn't like Frank. She doesn't like Arnold. I mean, I can go down the list of all the people. Um, Ron Morgan. Oh, crap. Was it? I don't think that's right. Oh well. Pro I might have to look that one up. Brenda. Brenda Perry. She's a nice lady who works hard. Greg Call. Um, Big Jim. Slade. Bosworth Clark and Della Lang. She works with MTC and Gideon on business planning. I've heard she was having a lot a hot affair with a scientist who did some consulting work. Really? A hot affair? Not just one of those normal ones. Sam Jones. No. I I can't read this. I, I, I can't read my own writing. And I'm and I'm disappointed in myself. Because it told me spelling was important like so many times. I mean I can just look up the name on the internet probably. Okay, I found it. It's an E. Why did I make an E like that? That's not right. Jeez, I should put it like an H. Okay, let's ask about... Valdax? No. Val... Dez. Both think there's something strange going on at MTC. I know Carl Linsky was working with MTC, but he never said what project... 
He saw a number of Law and Order radicals going in to meet with Griffith. Griffith has a tie with Law and Order. That's interesting. Okay, we got some information now. Yeah, they don't. They won't understand if I don't spell things correctly. Okay, that's interesting. Okay, we got some good info. I think I think she actually gave us some decent info. Um, we got we got a Tom Griffith is associated with Law and Order somehow. So I think Tom Griffith is not is not a good guy either. But he might be he might be being controlled in the brain. You know, it's possible he's being controlled too. Let's talk to Tom Griffith. He's at four five nine zero. Okay, well, we gotta do this game because that's what we wanted to do. I was like hoping I could do this game again. I was like, it was like. I was like, when is this game gonna happen again? And here it is. Ow. the screen and like kill me that's not cool there we go that was not cool i just want to say that wasn't cool whoops that was a mistake again. It's getting tough to go anywhere without someone trying to kill me. I locate the house of Tom Griffith, the VP and general manager of NTC. It's a two-story home with a spiked wrought iron fence, a swimming pool, and concrete paths that wind along bird baths and fountains. I knock on the door, but no one answers. I can tell someone is there, so I continue knocking. Finally, a rather irritated Tom Griffith comes to the door. Alright, ask me... I'll ask him about Frank Stimming. He, he's the president of Gideon and MTC. He could care less about MTC, and it's fine with me. We get along fine without him. Okay. Let's ask about um, J. St. Gideon. J. St. Gideon is uh, an electronics genius and a good friend of mine. Okay. Is he, though? Is he, though? Let's ask about Larry Hammond. That ill-tempered freak? He gets to think twice before he speaks. That way he can say something even nastier. Anything he says about us is a lie. The only reason we hired that m manster is because of his vast computer knowledge. All right, fine. Let's ask about Ron Meat for no reason. Um, all right, let's ask about, uh, Law and Order. The Law and Order Party is becoming more powerful every day and has followers throughout government and business. They're working with us to develop a device which will revolutionize the surveillance industry. Then we will put, put it to work against the enemies of this country. All decent citizens will benefit from our work. There are those who think the device is dangerous, but we'll soon change their minds about that by killing them or changing their minds through force. Let's ask about Overlord. Uh, how did you find out about Overlord? I guess it doesn't matter because it's almost operational. Although microchips and satellite monitoring stations, we can watch anyone, anywhere in the world. Overlord will greatly enhance government security. 
Everyone will benefit through this new control device, except those who are deemed a threat. Look at his look at it. he's he's got he's got the he's got the dodgy eyes. Alright, let's ask about Nexus. That's the name of our computer, which Larry Hammond designed for us. Okay, uh let's ask about MTC. MTC will soon be more than just a management training center. We're working on new surveillance equipment that will change the industry. Alright, let's ask about Gideon Enterprises. Gideon is the parent company of MTC. We're involved in electronics, surveillance, and satellite technology. MTC is the management training center, but recently we've been involved in development as well. All right. Um, Carl Linsky. He was a USF professor, and he had worked with him in the past. I heard he jumped off the Golden Gate Bridge. Al Davis. I read about him a few weeks ago. Didn't he die of poisoning? Isn't it strange how many accidental deaths and suicides have occurred lately? Yeah. Accidental deaths. Uh-huh. John Kloss wasn't happy at MTC. We'd be very interested in finding him. That. And killing him. So you can kill him. Right? So you can murder him. So you can murder him. This 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 person is providing a lot of information, actually. Um, okay, David Pope. We're just gonna ask about all the people that. Um, Ron has done some work for MTC, but he left before completing his assignment. Let's ask about Arnold Weed for no real reason. He's just a bookkeeper who works for Gideon. I don't really know too much about him. He's pretty quiet and keeps himself. See, he knows everybody. You know, one guy who's like, I can't expect to know... Everybody who works for me. This guy knows everybody. She seems to be competent at her job. Okay. Uh, Greg Call. A brilliant scientist, but he had trouble keeping company secrets. I heard he was a victim of an accidental shooting. Really? That, that's, that's, those are two sentences that went together very interestingly. A brilliant scientist, but he had trouble keeping secrets. That's a, that, you know, that's an interesting way to have two sentences go together. Big Jim Slade. I think Big ben, ben Jim works for the Law and Order Party. Oh, that's interesting. Law and Order. Okay, Bosworth Clark. Clark has done work for us, but we, we no longer require his services. Sandra Larson. Sorry, I can't help you there. Okay, I thought I might have spelled it wrong. Della Lang. She's been in she's been in on several occasions. She works with Gideon and MTC as a management consultant. And then Sam Jones is the last one. Very fine scientist. He's also a good friend. Okay, I didn't get any information about uh, where people may be, but password, pass card. Okay, that that's that's it. I think we've asked him everything that we can ask him about people. He's not giving us any information on uh, like, well, let's just say insurance because it's on our sheet. Okay. All right, I think we're done with him. I mean, I'm just, I'm checking my, I'm checking my info because, um, I want to make sure I didn't miss anything, but, uh, oh, I hit exit. Okay, I guess we've exited. All right, so we visited, uh, him. He seems very dodgy and questionable. 
Um, so let's just let's go to Jorge Valdez and see what he can tell us. Um, four nine three one. Jorge Valdez, uh, the Jorge Valdez home is located in the tract housing project in Oakland. He comes to the door, and I notice he is still wearing his security badge from MTC. I ask him a few questions about MTC, and he gets a suspicious look on his face. They're keeping everything top secret. I know some law and order party big shots from Los Angeles have been in the office on a number of occasions. No one is supposed to know where they're from, but I overheard them talking while I was doing some service on one of the computers. I asked a few more questions. It's obvious he distrusts what's going on, but isn't quite sure what they what they're involved with. I thank him for his time and leave. Alright, so he didn't give me a whole lot of info. But still Okay, next we're gonna we talk to Jorge Next, we're going to talk to Brenda Perry uh, at 4577. Brenda Perry's home is a small but elegant two-story house set slightly back from the street. The lawn has just been cut, and there are fresh flowers in a pot on the porch. Brenda Perry answers the door. I ask her a few questions, but she quickly informs me that she just started at MTC about six weeks ago and really doesn't understand all that goes on right now. I asked her to call me if she hears of anything that is odd or peculiar and leave. Okay, also no help. All right. Next, we've got Sandra Larson. We've already visited her. And the last one we've got on our list is Delma Lang. Which is two one one one. All right, where are we at? I forget where we are. Where did we go? Oh, Della Lang. Della's Lang apartment in Ventura is part of a small complex. Della Lang answers the door. I give her the details of the cave and ask if she has a few minutes to answer some questions. It's clear that she doesn't want to be bothered, but then agrees. Make it quick, she says. All right, look at her. We actually can ask questions. Yay! I like being able to ask questions as opposed to just having things. All right, we're, we we got to ask about uh, MTC. MTC is Gideon's Management Training Center. To tell you the truth, it hasn't gotten far. It hasn't gotten far with them. Tom Griffin doesn't like me looking into their affairs much. Okay, Gideon. Uh, enterprises. Gideon is a Fortune 500 firm that is doing very well in their particular industry. That doesn't mean it's run perfectly. They have hired me as an outside consultant to evaluate many of their procedures. Okay, Overlord. I about doubt she knows anything about that. Uh, Nexus. I doubt she knows anything about that. Law and Order. I don't like them, but they can be done, but what can be done? They have as much right to express their opinions as anybody. Oh, we got that one. We've got that. We've got that same exact response before. All right, let's ask about Ron Morgan. Let's ask about the people that we don't know where they are. Uh, Ron and I go out on occasion. If you are looking for him, he, oh, we actually got a destination. Yes. NC1998. So she is tied to Ron Morgan. Interesting. Okay. If you see him, tell him I still have those handcuffs. <laughs> okay, Brenda Perry. We've already. Well, we we're going to ask her about him. Jorge Valdez. Can't help you, Brenda. Not Brenda. Brenda. Brenda Perry. Can't help you, Greg. Call. Can't help you, Big. Big Jim Slade. 
can't help you. Bosworth. Bosworth Clark. Can't help you. Sam Jones. Can't help you. Okay, so she gave us one destination we haven't been to. Ron Morgan, which is nice. Um, she didn't really give us a whole lot more, but, you know, that's something, right? I mean, I guess we'll ask her about Tom Griffith, too. Tom Griffith. When I met with him to discuss company procedures, he's always stalling about certain reports not being available. Then he tries to ask me out. He's a royal pain to work with. Okay, that does sound like a pain. Frank Shimming. Mr. Shimming is a hard-nosed businessman. He's done an excellent job, and I share his ideals. Larry Hammond. Not Jar Jari. Larry Hammond. Can't help me. Jay St. John. Not J not J. St. John, St. Gideon. He was president of Gideon Enterprises at one time. I heard him tell Sh uh, Shimming he'd get even with him someday. Right. That's interesting. Because that means he might help me at some point. He might actually help me at some point. If I need help or something, he might be one to help to, to ask for help. But I can't really ask questions, so I mean I can just ask about people, so um Alright, I think we're done with her. I think we I think we need to we can come back at another time, so um we're gonna mark that as a conversation done. And now we're gonna go talk to Ron Morgan. Okay. He is at uh one nine nine eight. Uh well it's up here. Whoa! We got a screen here. Being in the mountains feels like getting out of school for summer. The air is still pretty clean, and the sky is actually blue up here. Ron Morgan's cabin is on a beautiful piece of uh, property near Yosemite. It's decorated with quaint, homey items that make me feel like I've stepped back in time. Okay, uh, and the door apparently is open. What's this table? Looks like there's something under it. Uh, look. It's a square-shaped breakfast table. You scan and open the page and find an article on the death of Professor Karl Linsky. You casually scan the magazine Calculus Monthly not understanding anything, of course. Each minute you waste skimming the articles brings you closer to impending doom. The food looks unappetizing. Taste the microwave. The pancakes are really old and the sausages taste like rubber. Something we can actually taste. Let's get it. Let's get this magazine, too. Uh, Alright. Uh, move the table. No, move it. Open it. Turn it on and off. Paste it. Nope. Okay, we can't do that. Rug. Move it. I knew it. I knew it! There's a loose floorboard. Open it. Moving the floorboard reveals a small compartment. The compartment measures 8 by 12 by 8. Okay. The compartment the compartment is locked and you don't have the key. Okay. We need we need a key. Okay. The I taste the rug apparently. Okay. Oh. I thought this was going to give us info, info on the desk, but no. There we go. Desk. 
solid metal desk. It doesn't look metal. I believe it. I believe that the up and coming Tex Murphy games get better. I believe it. I don't I it's like when you're wishing when when you play a game and you're like, man, I hope they make a sequel. But if they do the same thing that they do in this game, I don't really want a sequel. It's like, y you know, you want a sequel, but you want them to take the good parts of the game and get rid of all the stuff that you didn't like. But you want a sequel, but you don't want it to be like the game that you're playing. Doesn't that that seems like a weird thing to want? Like the game is good enough and I think they can do better. But I sure as heck hope it's not the same game. The fax machine is operational. The paper is jagged, as if someone had hurriedly torn the last message away. Um get. Open. Move. On off. Paste. Okay, drawer. Open. It's locked and I don't have a key. Move. Okay. So the drawer in the desk that's locked, chair. Uh, let's look at the chair. Get the chair. Move the chair. Open the chair. On off the chair. Taste the chair. All right. Book bookcase. Look at the bookcase. It carefully examine the bookshelf for you. Nothing out of the ordinary. Get it. Move it. Open it. On off. Paste it. Trash can. Look. Plain trash can sits on the floor. Wadded paper. Okay, look at the wadded paper. The wadded paper is a fax message which reads, Dear Ronnie, last night was incredible. You're incredible. But I need my nylons back. Yours always, Della. Okay, that was, that, that was, that definitely, I know who that's from. Um, let's take it. All right. Move the trash can. All right. Nothing from that. Okay, where would we get a key? Fireplace, maybe? Look, it's an eight foot couch with a cushion out of place. Okay, look at the cushion. Move the cushion. Aha! We have Cheetos. It looks like cheese that went crunch. Yeah, we got a Cheetos. We got some nylons. We got some change. A dollar. Oh, yeah. Handcuff key. All right, we got a handcuff key. Man. I think there were shenanigans going on on this desk or this couch. There's a key in the ashtray. Okay. What a weird place for a key to be. All right, let's go over here. Diploma. Looks like a master's degree from Stanford. It's rain and tacos. Dang, I was hoping we could get our own Stanford degree. FMV a lot later on. Hey, thanks to Obvious Mantis for the stream boost. You feel that way about Doom Infernal? You want another Doom game, but it's not going to be like that. I feel like that's like this game. Like, I'm enjoying the investigative part and the note-taking and all that stuff, but, like, everything else I'm not liking. I don't like the interface. I don't like the flight simulator part. I don't like the action shooting game. I don't like so much about it. I feel like the good parts about it, I think the plot's interesting and the investigative portions are interesting and like everything else sucks. But I feel like they have potential on making a fantastic game if they went if they went, if they took all the strong points and focused on them and threw away all the junk. Let's move it. Let's fast open it. On off it. No. Okay, wall switch. Look at it. Uh, on off. Okay, 
Okay, we can turn the fire on. Moose head, look. Whoops, that's not what I meant to do. Look, no. Look at the moose head. A big, ugly moose head stares back at you. There appears to be a latch under the chin. Okay. There's cash. Is this gonna like trigger an alarm? You think this is gonna trigger an alarm? Yeah, let's get it. Nope, it didn't trigger an alarm. We just got 500, five, we just stole $500. The coming games will be good, but also a lot of new ideas. Okay. I mean, I, 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 like I said, I like, uh, I like doing a lot of the stuff in this game. It's, it's a little bit tedious, I must admit. Um, maybe too tedious. I kind of wish they wouldn't require you to keep your own notes. Um, but it is what it is. Fireplace. There's a large rocky fireplace with an ugly, oh, the moose head's up there. Okay. Gas log, wadded paper. Oh, we didn't look at it. Oh, no. Okay, we're going to have to look at it in the in the car. Because we I forgot. Oh, it's another screwdriver. We got a second screwdriver. Now we have two screwdrivers. Now we can, like, double-handed screwdriver stuff. I mean... Taste the gas log. Open it. Move it. Get it. Get it. Okay. That's it. Alright. I think we can open the desk now. Just saying. There's a photograph and a mortgage book. A picture of an attractive woman in lingerie. You frantically search for more to find none. Okay, I guess that's probably Della. Um, a payment book for a beach house located near San Diego. Uh, six, four, seven, oh. Well, that's interesting. Ron Morgan Beach House. Six four seven oh. Well, I assume it's not like somebody else we know. No, it's not. We don't have that. So it's not. All right. It has a lot of fax messaging too. Yeah. Let's take it. All right. Uh, man, I don't have a key to whatever is in that. Whatever is in that thing. Um, I don't know if there's anything else in here to look at. Like, what's under... I feel... It looks like there's something under this table, doesn't it? What is it? I don't know. I mean, I guess it's not important. I can't go that way. Alright. I feel like we've looked at everything, although we haven't looked at the TV yet. There's a TV up here. 
And look, it's a widescreen TV. It's pretty thick. Looks like a very nice high definition TV. Looks like it might hide a small compartment, really? Ooh. Nice. What's this wall switch do? Oh, the ceiling fan. Let's turn it on. Ooh. Fancy, schmancy. Look at that animated. Uh, and now we can probably. We probably have the key to open this now. Compartment. Uh, open. Jewels. Jewels. Yeah, buddy. A deed. It's a deed for a one acre near Bakersfield. Okay. What the heck is this? One seven one zero. Okay. Well, we got ammo. Let's get that. All right. I think we've done everything in here. I think I think we're complete. I think we have uh, completed this area. The video phones would have been smartphones. You remember in 2000 you had a 32 inch um, widescreen TV? Oh man, you saw one? Oh man. Yeah, t CRTs were just heavy. I remember getting rid of a TV and. I wanted to get rid of the TV and the uh, entertainment center that it came in. So I was like, you can have the TV with the entertainment center for free, but you have to take both. And somebody took it. And maybe they just threw away the entertainment center. I don't know, but I made them take both. I was like, you have to take both. So the price of taking the TV was you had to take the entertainment center too. Because it was a big it was a big thing. And you had to move it they had to move it themselves and all that, so that was like the price. So let's go to I get this beach house. Uh six four seven zero. Okay. Oh, it's another it's another one of these scenes. Ron Morgan's beach house is located along a stretch of private beach on the Pacific just outside of San Diego. The hot, dry Santa Ana, Santa Ana winds lash out across the back porch. Outside, the pounding surf is deafening, but inside is strangely quiet. The air filtration system has not been turned on for a while. The room smells of stale cigarette smoke and spilled whiskey. When I enter the room, the door shuts behind me, setting off the security alarm. I have five minutes to turn it off before the cops get here. Oh, it's another one of these. Alright. Enter. Move the plant. Open the plant. Move the chair. Uh, turn on the lamp. Look at the lamp. Get the lamp. Move the lamp. Open the lamp. Alright. Five minutes. That's not very long. I just want to note that. Couch. 
Well, this is like a modern, this is like a really nice place. Open on lamp on look able look get move open console look control switch three switches built onto switch one okay on okay we turn the lights on on okay there's a safe. Okay. And there we go. That was easy. <laughs> All right. That wasn't too bad. We just had to find this. It was just a switch. Like that's, it's just a switch. It's a pretty nice place. Look at this place. Pretty nice place, I must say. Let's look at the safe. Why can't we, why can't we, uh... Oh, it was tied to the switch, that's why. Okay. Computer, look. The computer without, won't operate without a pass card. Okay, this is another pass card. Okay. A drawer. Okay, can we open the drawer? Probably not. It's locked. Answering machine. Look at it. Uh, on off. Ron, this is Della. Call Ron, me. Ron, this is Della. Call me. Ron, this is Della. Call me. Weird. Let's take it. No, move it. Ron, this is Della. Call me. Open it. Taste it. Mmm, delicious answering machine. Bookcase, look. Chess book, look. One book, high on the top shelf is a chess book. Get. Oh, we should have opened it. Oh, we forgot to look at the wadded paper, too, that we got. Um, fish food. There's probably something in the fish tank. Didn't we hear something about there being... Didn't, didn't Austin say something about putting it in a tarantula tank? But I thought we might have heard something about something being in a fish tank, but maybe I'm thinking of something else. Look, a large fish tank with many small fish darting around nervously. Oh, there's a pass card. Look. Get. You dump the piranha food in the tank and they feed ravenously. Then they, when finished, you are able to reach into the tank and get the card. Okay, well there you go. We needed the fish food. We got it. The octagonal base supports the fish tank. Open. A book. Open. You open the book and read that piranha make lousy companions and are untrustworthy ba babysitters for children and small pets. Okay. All right. We we you know we know his password has to do with like chess, so we can just trial and error this, right? I mean, honestly. We haven't gotten the key yet, have we? Hmm. We haven't looked over in this area, though. There's one place we haven't looked, and that's over here. We also don't know the combination to the safe. This is his Nexus computer. We haven't looked over here. This looks... 
a microwave. Look. Open. Look. Get. Move. It's broken. Paste it. Look. Open. There's a videotape in it. On top of the fridge is a videotape titled Top Heavy Beach Bimbos from Mars. Get. Look at the pizza. What kind of pizza? It's a Zippy's 12 inch pizza. It's a sizable pizza. Let's take it. Look at the juice. Uh, Dr. Don's 100% non radiated orange juice. Alright, that's cool. Freezer. Open. Look. There's ice cubes. Let's get those. They'll just melt. Okay. Okay, we didn't get a key, so... It's already open. Have we looked in it? No. Get... I mean, yes. Alright, well... I don't know. Maybe the key's in the safe? Maybe the key to the disc is in the safe. I mean, that's possible. There's also a plant there. But I think we already tried the plant. Didn't we? We already looked at the plant. There's nothing there. Plant. Get. Move. Open. Look. Okay, nothing. They just tell us there's a mutated plant. Alright. Enter. Computer. Okay. Insert red password, passcard. So his is red. Red is Ron. And the password is, let's try Rook. Nope. Alright. Knight. Nope. Um, Queen. Nope. King. Hmm. That's all the pieces. That's all the chess pieces we've got. That's it. Unless, unless, unless it's a, called a castle. Like, you might be able to call it a castle. Or a horsey. <laughs> a horsey. It's all of our chess pieces. Maybe, maybe the maybe the game knows we don't know it. Is that possible? All right, I think we need to go out to a car and look at this book. So I didn't, I didn't look at it. I'm guessing we need to look at the book, the chess book, because we can't look at stuff while we're in a house, which is kind of dumb. But you know, whatever. Yes. I mean, it is what it is. Holy crap, look at all this stuff we've got. Oh, here's how you pawn stuff. How do we look? Oh, look. Stalemate! Stalemate! It's just, it's just a, uh, it's a mixed up word. It's stalemate. Oh, so it's a chess term, but not necessarily a piece. <clears throat> okay, I got it. It's stalemate. Alright, we also had a crumpled up piece of paper, which I don't see. Here, here, let's look at this. Water piece of paper in a fax reads, Professor, in accordance with your instructions, I have moved your computer equipment to your beach house. Oh, that's the note that we hadn't read. Okay. Exit. Okay, so that's how we pawn stuff. So, E, I'm going to say E, 
go back in. And I set off the alarm again. <laughs> That's hilarious. Everything reset. Um, wait. Where were where the switches? Oh, console. Okay. There we go. That opens the save. Okay. All right. So we have to do that. Apparently, every time we come back here, we, we're going to have to do that, which is fine, but still a little annoying. It is what it is. Stalemate. All right, we got that one. All right, personal log. R. Morgan. I thought the old geek hired at he hired me as a research consultant because he was mystified by my book, An Elderly Guide to Picking Up Chicks. I now see that he's a dangerous lunatic who's totally out of control. So I'm getting out of town. That's it. That's what we got. I mean, it's fine. That doesn't give me the safe combination, though. I don't have the combination to the safe still. Where would the combination to the safe be? I don't feel like, in general, we've, like, not found the solution to all of the stuff well i guess the screwdriver was the one exception i mean i'm guessing the safe just contains like monetary things it probably doesn't contain actual stuff we need it they usually don't safes usually don't contain like stuff we need which is kind of weird when you think about it can't find the switch I mean I'm just I'm just gonna just go I'm just gonna leave I'm gonna go to his other place we've gone here his beach house we got the red card I just want to note we also have the green card and we know the password is pawn we also have the uh gray card oh we don't have the green card we do have the green card i think we have the green card we we know the gray cards password is uh king and we know the uh what's 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 um what's linsky's color i don't know what it is i think it's blue i think it's blue and his password is bishop so that that gives us that gives us half of the information we need. We still need the card from Law and Order, but we have the we ha we know the card color and the password for it. So um and also if you look at our inventory Actually, I don't have to look at my inventory. Now Now that I know that it's any chess term, um, like that makes, that means that we might be able to decode the messages that we had. We had that, we had those scramble things. Pawn, I see pawn there. Um, I see bishop. I see queen i see uh king i see rook i see pawn i see checkmate i see uh i don't know what that is knight i see knight i see black and white um what's this one 
BMGTAI. I do have a lot of stuff. This one's like one of the, this was one of the top ones. I don't know what, which one it is. Yeah, it's this one. I'm actually looking at this one. So we've got Bishop. Let me write these down on this paper. We've got Bishop. We've got Queen. We've got uh, this one, which I don't know what this one is. I'm not sure what this one is. L A S E N T O L W. Not sure. Not sure what that one is either. That one looks like Pong. That doesn't make sense. We have King. We have Rook. We've got Pawn. We have Checkmate. We've got uh, something. We have Stalemate. We have something. We have Knight. I'm guessing the book that we got will help a lot. Um, we have Black. And we have White. Okay. Last in Tolboa. <laughs> That's what it is. It's Last in Tolboa. We have a book that has uh, chess terms in it, so I'm guessing that book will help us. Um, book on chess. Okay. That is not helpful. I want to... Yeah. Dongar, rag, rag, ragdon, gardon, gar, guard, no, I don't know. You need to learn how to last and pull. Yeah, we, I know, right? I'm guessing we could probably look up chess terms, but there's castle is something you can do in chess. I know chess just enough. Oh, castle, that is one of them. One of them is Castle. That one, that S L C T, that's Castle. Castle. Okay, I feel like not opening this book and reading it is not good. Looks like you can also reclaim stuff that you want back. We can we can pawn our pizza for three. We can pawn a pass card, which would probably soft lock us for a thousand. <laughs> pawn some Cheetos for two. Duels for two thousand. Deed for one. Okay. All right. I don't know what the other ones are. I mean, there's check as well, but that doesn't seem to be in there. Oh well. All right, we got one more place to go. We've got the, uh, we've got the, where is my, where is it? We got the deed. We wanna go to where the deed goes, which is 1710. One seven one zero. That's it. Are we gonna fight? Oh, deeded property. The piece of property is in the middle of nowhere. There's no structure, buildings, and it's covered with sagebrush and weeds. I walk around the property, but don't find anything noteworthy, so I leave. All right. 
We got the key card. That's really what we needed. I think Ron just left. I think he's like, I'm freaking out of here. I'm, I'm out of here, dude. I'm gone. So we need, we need, we need to uh, figure out stuff about other people. So let's let's get our secretary out on the phone and uh, ask some questions. Hello, Tex. Hello, Sam Jones. Can't help you there. Okay. What about uh, Bosworth Clark? Can't help you there. What about Big Jim Slade? Can't help you there. Damn it. What about Greg? Greg Call. Can't help you there. You're not very helpful, Veronica, or Virginia, or whatever your name is. Oh, we did that one too. So we've been everywhere. Um, maybe we can go back to, uh, I, you know, if this was a, a standard adventure game, I'd go back to Della and talk to her, but I don't feel like she'll be any, any more use, you know? I feel like we, it, we'll just get the same information again. So... What's our next what's our next plan of attack? We need to know more about law and order. Um, but I think Big Jim Slade is that is our in for law and order. Cuz he he's a member of law and order. All right. I want to go back here because it's cir I have it circled, like, instead of checked. So I just want to go back and check it again. Oh, no, I did what I needed to do here. Never mind. I actually did what I needed to do here. I thought this was... I thought this was some, some other place. Okay. I mean, there we go. Oh, that's right, We there was a box in here. That's why, because there was a box in here. Remember there's a box in here? And we don't know how to get it? Yeah, we don't know how to get this box. That was our, that was our conundrum, is we don't know how to get this box. There's a box in the, in the cage with the, with the uh, ape. And we don't know how to get it. That's right. That's why I circled it, because I didn't feel like I was done with the area yet. That's why. So, yeah. So I need to figure out how to do that. That's what I need to do. I need to figure out how to get get the thing. I don't I don't know.
I don't think we have what we need yet. I just don't think we have what we need yet. So I think we may we may we may need to uh talk to our informant again. Let's uh let, how much money do we have? We've got um we've got we've only got five hundred and one dollars. I think we're gonna have to pawn something. Um I think we're gonna have to pawn something for the first time. I mean we've got stuff to pawn. Like this. We can pawn the we can pawn all the loot that we got. We got various pieces of loot that clearly are meant to be pawned. Like Cheetos. No, I don't think the Cheetos are meant to be pawned. Like jewels. Pawn that. And the fruit cake. Actually, it's a statue, I think. Fish food tape, pizza key, invoice, trap. Where is it? I don't see it. Even before that. Can of what? Chemicals. Watch. Probably pawn that as well. So it looks like to get it back you have to pay double the cost. So if it's like of oh, the statue, there we go. There we go. We got 9,000. Okay. There. Hey, thanks for the contribution to the stream boost. What do you need, Murphy? Yeah, we wanna... Greg! Make me an offer. Alright, our first offer is gonna be 500. That seems it's a to be deal. the lowest that she's willing to go. All right, how about um, Big Jim Slade? Make me an offer. All right, we'll give you, we'll offer you 500 again. It's a deal. All right, cool. And what about Bosworth Clark? What about Bosworth Clark? Bosworth Clark. Make me an offer. All right, 500 more dollars. It's worth more. Really? Seven fifty. It's worth more. One thousand. It's a deal. Yeah, a thousand for that one. Hmm, interesting. Okay. We also don't know anything about Sam Jones. Make me an offer. Dang. Five hundred. It's a deal. All right. She's given us. We've just paid her. A lot of money for a lot of info but here we go here's the info let's hope it's worth it okay talk to Steve Clements about Greg Paul he can give you some important facts you might need okay so we need to go back to Steve Clements man that's way back Okay. Next next fact is uh, I don't know where Jones is, but John Kloss could help you locate him. Okay. I'm <laughs> trying to organize this. Sam Jones. Okay, this would be John Kloss. So we have to talk to John Kloss for him. All right. Uh, I don't know where Clark is, but, 
Uh, I have a lead. Talk to Peter Dull, the insurance agent. My God. Okay. Peter Dull. Okay. Next. She hasn't been able to give us any information on... Okay, I don't know where Slade to find Slade, but police detective... Oh, Steve Clements might be able to help us find him, too. Okay. And a Slade. Okay. All right. So we're headed to Steve Clements. There's a game called Supposedly Wonderful Future. Oh. I don't know. Let me let me take me let me take a look at it real quick. I might be able to find out a little bit more. Supposedly wonderful future. Is it is it not on Steam? It might be on Steam. You might want to check on Steam. It looks like it's, it looked like it came from Steam at one point. Um, because based on the based on the uh, based on the uh, the image, looks like I got it from Steam. Let me see if I can link it to Steam. Oh, there's also an IGDB link um, to it, but I don't know if that gives you anything either. Oh yeah, it's on Steam. I just didn't link it. Some of these games lost their links to Steam. It's a science fiction story about screens, small rooms, and existential dread told through a series of RPG-style dialogues, it says. So visual novel esque, I'm guessing. There, I updated it with the Steam link, and there's now a trailer associated with it. So there you go. Okay, so let's go to Steve Clements. He is at uh, four six eight zero. Oh. Four six eight zero. Oh. Right? Yeah. Okay, we want to ask about uh um wait what? Oh, I I attached him to the wrong. Slade. Greg. You're not too popular around here. The chief has told us we're not supposed to give out information on this case to anyone, and your name was specifically mentioned. I'm taking a big risk talking to you. This professor call commits suicide in his apartment. We, we, I think he knew he was dead, actually. Shoots himself with that 38, looks open and shut, but I'm starting to get suspicious about all the suicides. And before we got there, a couple of goons, hired goons, from the law and order party had gone through the house pretty thoroughly. All right, cool. And then we have J Big Jim Slade. Slade's a dangerous man. He's from Detroit. And when he's in town, there's always trouble brewing. We've never been able to pin anything on him, but I'm sure he's a hired gun who's killed a number of people. If you're looking for him, good luck. He's likely to find you before you find him. A guy named Ron Meat might be able to help you, though. Ron Meat! All right. Let's go, let's go talk to Ron Meat again. And let's punch him in the face a second time, probably. Four, six, eight, 
4525. Do we have to fight people here? I can't remember. I can't remember if it's a fight area or not. I don't think it is. Alright. Uh, Big Jim Slade. Big Jim Slade. I saw him a week ago throwing money around it, like it grew on trees. He said he's been real busy lately, and that means people are getting bumped off. I don't know where he is now, but if you hear something, if I hear something, I'll let you know. Okay. Thanks. Thanks. All right, let's go to Greg. Oh, wait, we got more. We should talk to John Claus, too, because he probably knows where Sam Jones is. So let's talk to John Claus, who's at 7012. I've been here before, dude. I need to know about Sam Jones. He's an arrogant old Nazi. He's an arrogant old Nazi. What? Who works in Las Vegas? Zero zero two one. Be careful, he's a faithful Law and Order Party member. Apparently Law and Order Party members are Nazis. Good to know. He's not gonna be cooperative with you. So punch him? So I'm supposed to punch him? Is that it? Okay, well, I got some info. So let's go to, uh, let's go to Greg Call. Um. Oh, Peter Dahl. We need to talk to Peter Dahl, too. Let's go to Peter Dahl's. Four, six... Seven four. We want to ask him about uh, Bosworth Clark. Yes, I've written several insurance policies for Doctor Clark. He's quite eccentric. His laboratory is in Death Valley. He works with satellites and says the reception is much better in the desert. Try NC nine nine. Okay, we got him. NC nine nine three two. All right, we got some info. We got three new places. All right, cool. Okay, put in put in Peter or Greg. Greg Call is seven four seven five three. All right. Oh, we got another fight. What? Okay, I'm not doing so well. These guys are very aggressive. These guys are being very aggressive right now, and I don't like it. get past this filing cabinet it's basically like oh jeez we just got slaughtered what the heck <laughs> man <laughs> the heck was that all about we gotta go forward I don't know how I got that guy. Oh, so I think they're spacing their bullets out more, which makes it more difficult. Damn it! Oh, wait, there's another thing there. I 
I just there's another thing that's that's uh, blocking. Them. Okay, this is actually very annoying. This is horribly done. I'm getting ready to turn this on the easy because um, I don't like it. It's just not. It's just not good. It's the controls are jank. The controls are super bad. They're really, really bad. Like um, sometimes I have to double hit keys. Like I feel like I feel like their their keyboard input detection is awful. And I don't know why. Like sometimes I'll hit a button and nothing happens. I have to do it a second time. And it's the same with the, it, this 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 game works very similar. Like I hit the I hit the fire button and nothing happens. That that was nice. That was that was pretty straightforward. Okay, that's a good strat there. Do the double shot. Do the double tap. The double tap's a good strat. Damn it! Did I win? I think I won. Yeah, I won that time. All right. Greg Call. Greg Call's apartment is located in Vallejo. Uh, it feels quite Spartan, stocked with only the bare essentials. I searched the place carefully, but there isn't much to see. I move the dresser in the bedroom, and a and a mop falls. Oh, to the floor. Or map, not a mop. A map falls to the floor. The map is of an area in California near Mount Shasta, and the navigation code is 8911. Okay. 8911. Uh, it's a... It's Mount Shasta... Isn't Shasta like a cola brand? Um, and the navigation is, is is circled. If the Law and Order boys had found this, they would have taken it. Maybe this is where the laboratory is located, and I can beat them to the punch. I return to my speeder as quickly as possible. All right. Well, okay. That was that was what happened there. All right. Let's go there. Eight nine one one. Eight nine one one. I fly to the location near Mount Shasta that is circled on the map from Professor Call's apartment. The landing spot is deep in the forest and heavily mountainous terrain. After searching the area for a few minutes, I find an opening to a small cave and go inside. The narrow cut in the rock descends about 100 feet and then opens into a large cavern. I see a small light coming from a chamber on the far wall, and I decide to check it out. This must be... Cal calls laboratory. Oh, it's got a robot. I want to look at the robot. Robot. Let's look at the robot. A utility field robot, over twenty years old, looks to be in poor condition. I just want to point out, twenty years old would make it from. 2013. That robot's from 2013. Look at the circuit box. Medium sized circuit box. Open it. It's locked. Computer. Look at that. Computer doesn't operate without a pass card. Fax. Let's look at that. Get. Moved. 
open. Oh, we got a key. We got a key. Open. It's locked. We still don't have a key for it. Okay, look. Uh, open. Money. Get. Get. Okay, we got some. We got some money and ammo. Let's move the robot. Open the robot. Get the robot. Let's turn the robot on. Danger! Danger! Warning! Danger! Ah. Hilarious. Stalagmite. Look at it. Oops. Look at it. Stalagmite. Get it. Move it. Open it. On. Turn it on. Taste it. Good idea. Well, thanks. I appreciate. I appreciate. I appreciate when my good ideas are appreciated. Your VPN server stopped working right as I started talking about your last comment. Oh, the soda one? About Shasta? Or about Richard Lovelady? Let's open it. Open it. Map. Let's look at the map. A map of California, navigation code circle one seven. What? We got another one. One seven zero zero. Lost Dutchman's diamond mine. That sounds. That sounds weird. The Lost Dutchman's Diamond Mine. Okay, well, we, we wrote it down. Let's take it, I guess. A vine. An extremely thorny vine. You grab the vine and try to move it, but it's full of thorns and rips your hands. There's a shelf cut into the stalagmite, but to move the vine, you'll need to have protection for your hands. Okay. There's a shelf in the stalagmite. Okay, we need hand protection. So we need some gloves. The protective containment system has designed for working with toxic chemicals and has two mechanical arms for handling material inside the containment area. One of the rubber seals is damaged. A small circuit box key is inside the containment system. A sealed vial labeled Nerve Agent. Using the mechanical arms, you clumsily maneuver the key towards the slot and retrieve it. Um, the vial... That doesn't seem like we want it. But we're going to try and get it anyway. Using the mechanical arms, you grab the vial, but knock it over instead. It cracks open, releasing deadly fumes. An alarm goes off and the door slams shut. You have five minutes to open the door before you, and leave before you die. Okay. Danger! Danger! Warning! That, Danger. I, that, that's not what I was expecting, honestly. I expected us to just die. What did we just do? Oh, it's a light. Oh, I wasn't expecting that. Okay. I thought that was going to turn off the thing. To get this open, a lubricant of some sort is needed for hinges that are rusted shut. A Volton regulation control panel. Okay. 
Throwing the switch shuts down the in internal confinement unit, releasing deadly nerve gas into the room. You have five minutes to deactivate the door locks if you want to leave. Okay. Danger! Danger! Well, we didn't Warning. reset. Danger! But apparently, this guy was serious about his security. A poll. Uh, look at the. Whoops. Look at the poll. A ten-foot pole. I I wonder if that's how we get the thing. There was a joke, I think, up with the ape thing. It said how we wouldn't get it with a nine-foot pole, and this is a ten-foot pole, I seem to recall. A rectangular sign with danger written on it. It's out of reach. Okay, Um, I don't think we can do anything there, so let's check this out. Plutonium unit control panel. Okay, that's probably not good. Hmm. Well. You know, I didn't try moving the sign. It's out of reach. Okay. Maybe this is the lag tide over here. Hides the, uh, hides the secret. Reveals a push button. Success. We have to leave, though. We still have to leave. We have to leave and then come back, I think. So we're going to reset the room. Which is kind of unfortunate, but true. Yeah, we have to leave. Oh, we glitched. we glitched it a little bit. By not leaving. The, now that the nerve gas has subsided, we can go in. And everything is reset. But, you know, no biggie. We have the key and everything, so... don't think we have the key to the drawer, do we? We do. What's in the drawer? Gloves? Wait, there's nothing in the... Oh, did we already get stuff from the drawer? I, I, I didn't remember. But I guess we did. I can't remember what we got from the drawer, but I guess we got something from the drawer. Where did we get a pass card from? Danger! Danger! Warning! Danger! Okay, we need to figure out how to, like, open the, uh, stalactite. Or get through the vine. We need, we need something. I don't know what, but we need something. Is it, the question is, is it here? So now that we have the pole, which I think is used to get the box, 
at that one place. We now know that sometimes items are not going to be where we want them to be. Hey, the vial's back. We can, we can, we can, we can destroy the world again. A lubricant of some type is needed. So we need a lubricant and some gloves. Or a robot that can do that can do it. An internal confinement an inertial confinement unit. I don't know what that does, but I push the button. Two hundred megawatt output. Whoa, a fusion generator. Only qualified personnel are allowed to do that. Opening this device might vaporize you. Well let's just let's just lick it. Tastes like a four letter word and that and the word isn't good. Um but it tastes like but gross. Okay, I think we might need something that's not in this room. So we may need to come back here. That's what I'm thinking right now. That we do not have what we need. Let's taste the robot. <laughs> danger! Danger! Warning! Danger! We licked the robot, but we didn't die because this is not a Sierra game. Alright, I'm gonna go use the pole, I guess. Yes. On, uh, where was this? This was at, uh, we also got another Lost Dutchman's Mine place. Where's that at? Well, that's way over there. I want to go there. We're going to go there. Oh, that's... Okay, well, whatever. This one, we I think we need to go to. <laughs> need to, like... Save. Although, if the ape kills us, then I'll be kind of... You know. Every time we come here, we have to disarm this stupid alarm. Oh, I was, I was gonna type move cage. Like, I was actually about to type move cage. Oh, we need to open the circuit box and then flip the switch. There we go. Problem solved. You use the 10 foot pole found in the cave and drag the box toward you through the bars. The box contains the orange pass card and some money. Orange pass card, yeah. Do we know his password? I don't think we know this guy's password. You know that? We have the orange one now. That's five of the eight that we need. 
One, two, three, four. Yeah, we only have five. You found another zombie apocalypse game? I wonder how much money it had in the box. The zombie apocalypse games. There's probably a few. I feel like most of them are like action-y games, so... Okay, that was not... I don't know how we get through the vines and stuff. I feel like we have to do that, but we don't have the... I guess we'll go to the other place, which is 1700. It almost feels like this one is a trick, but... The Lost Dutchman's Diamond Mine. I almost feel like this is a trick. Gold and diamond mine. I fly to the site of an old gold and diamond mine that was circled in the Professor Cal Cal's map. I look inside the mine shaft and around the property, but it looks as if it has been abandoned for quite some time. Nothing else to see or do at this location. Well, that sucks. So that would be a big, fat, poopy no. <clears throat> All right. Next, I guess we'll go to Bosworth. That's our next destination, is Bosworth. Which is, uh, 9932. <laughs> this might be our last destination for today. It's a rock. Well, there's another robot! This isn't good. We should pro Hey, there's some gloves! Look, some gloves! I see gloves! You know those gloves we needed? Look. There's gloves. Oh, door. Open. It's locked. It's the robot. Robot on a monitor station. It goes beep boop beep beep. It goes beep boop beep beep. It's a robot that goes beep boop beep beep. Power unit. Matchbook. Big Sur. Oh, look, another place. Big Surf Hotel. Big Surf Hotel. Uh, 5162. Um, this is. Who? Where are we at? This is Bosworth Clark. It's tied to Clark. Okay. Let's get it. List. Look. The list is titled Caged Rats, and it includes the names of top civic, political, and business leaders in the state. Okay, that's weird. Glass from a broken bottle is scattered all over the floor. Let's taste it. Okay, we can't. What's this? We can't see, I don't know what this is. There's a computer. There's a body. Which we can't apparently examine. Let's just walk over all of all of the evidence like an idiot. Look. A satellite monitor master control. Okay, uh Oh, we can see the satellite. Nice. Fancy schmancy. Look at the blueprints. Blueprints for a high frequency relay satellite. I see gloves on the freaking floor and I want them. You know, I see them right there. And I want them so badly because I know I need them. A 
Oh, there's the gloves. Okay. Yep, that's exactly what I need. A cup. Ski Utah. A sandwich. A half-eating sandwich. Let's take that. Actually, let's taste it. The bologna has gone brown and hard, but you decide to eat some of it anyway. You feel slightly nauseous. Alright. Okay, that's funny. That's funny! That's hilarious. That's hilarious stuff. Okay, this looks dangerous. Just saying. This looks a bit dangerous. Okay, we've got an address. Who, me? To eat a bologna sandwich that, yeah. Oh, here we go, dead scientist. Look. The man lies sprawled on the floor. His eyes are wide open and bulging. His body is cold, but not quite stiff. He probably died within the last 18 hours. I find a thin steel cord around his throat. Looks like a prose word. Well, that is evidence of foul play, if I've ever seen it. A, sh a, s a control panel, which is short-circuiting. A bank of monitors, some of which are broken, display information received from the satellite. Whoops. Okay, the switch seems to do nothing. Data. Look at the data. Various computer listings of satellite transmission data, none of which makes sense to you. Well, let's take it anyway. I don't care. I don't care if it doesn't make sense to me. I want it. Okay, we need a pass card. Move the chair. Open the chair. Get the chair. Calendar, look. Calendar for the year 2033. Move it. Oh, there's a compartment. Upon moving the calendar, you see a compartment behind it. Let's open the compartment. Stocks. 50 shares of stock worth $500. Okay, we just got some stocks worth five hundred. I guess that counts as money, huh? Okay, I don't see a key card, a pass card here. I'm guessing there's no pass card here. I'm guessing it's at the other place that we saw, which was the uh, hotel. But we did get some gloves. I think we, we I think we have to go back and use the gloves right right now because that way we don't forget. So I don't know if we're done here. Um, I'm not sure. Uh, where are we? Oh, we're here. I'm gonna put a circle here because I feel like we're not done here. And then we're gonna go back to Mount Shasta, which is uh, eight nine one one. which is all the way up there. Go into the lab. And deal with these vines. Using the gloves I found in Clark's lab, I'm able to move the vines. A small shelf has been cut into the slag type. Pass card! Yeah! Which one did we get? We got a pass card. Alright, let's see if we can use it on this computer. We, we, know, we know all the potential passwords that it probably could be, right? 
Um, okay, this one is the purple. This one's purple. We got purple. Purple. One, two, three, four, five. We've got six. Input the purple password. Purple password. Purple password. All right, queen. Nope. It's not queen. Rook. Nope. Uh, checkmate. Nope. Uh, knight. It was night. Purple is night. With the K. Excellent. It seems okay. Here's a personal log from uh, C. Call. It seems that the ultimate purpose of this microchip I've been designing is to control a person's feelings and emotions by implanting the device within the brain. This must be some sort of weapon which can destroy certain parts of the mind while leaving other areas intact. A victim could believe that he has full he was fully capable of thought and reason and not even realize what he was that he was under somebody's control. Yep. Not surprising. We kind of realized that was happening. All right, we got the pass card. I think that's, I think that's, I think that's, we're done with this room now. I think that's what we needed to do. So we're going to call this room done. So check. Check a Roonies. Okay, so let's go back to the car. Yes. Oh, we did get we did get Ron's card. Ron's card was red, and we got it. And his password was stalemate. Or did we get it? I don't remember if we got it or not. Or did we just hear about it? Can't remember. Let's look at all the pass cards we have. Can we see what color they are? This one's blue. Okay, we got a blue one. We got a. purple one we've got a red one. <laughs> oh, we do have a red one so we have the red one we do have a red one okay an orange one and a green one so we don't have the gray one that's the one that's with law and order okay that's the one with Law and Order, is the green one. Okay. Well, now we know. Okay. So you're going to save the game. We're going to stop the timer. We're going to save the game. <laughs>